Hello everyone and welcome to iBasiac and welcome to another vacuum cleaner review. This is a vintage machine dating from I believe the late 80s or early 90s. I unboxed this a while ago on my channel. If you want to see the unboxing, click on the link below and that will take you to the video. Now, if you remember the unboxing, there was a couple of things wrong with the machine. Notably, the two plastic extension tubes that should have been provided weren't in the box. Several weeks later, I managed to get the extension tubes, so everything's fine. Also, because this machine predated fitted plugs, I had to fit a plug to the cleaner. So now, I've got a plug fitted, I've got the extension ones, so let's get on with the review and demo. Regular and eagle-eyed viewers may notice that I try to match my top with whatever vacuum cleaner I'm demonstrating. If I can't match the top, I at least try to match the socks. Well, unfortunately, my wardrobe didn't contain any hideous salmon pink shirts or polo shirts or even any salmon pink socks, so I've had to just go for this flowery shirt and some rather plain navy socks so uh, I hope for any of you who like those details I hope it doesn't disappoint you to an unbearable degree okay enough of the fashion tips <laughs> let's get on with showing you around this very stylish but horribly coloured vacuum cleaner okay so let's focus on the main vacuum cleaner before I look at the cleaning tools now it's called Dolphin and I wonder why Electrolux decided to call it Dolphin. Well, I think it's due to the fact it looks like a dolphin. Well, no dolphin I've ever seen swimming in the sea, but it's got some styling hints of a dolphin. I'm thinking this grey colour, a bit reminiscent of a dolphin's skin, perhaps. And it may be just the front, the nose of the machine, looks a bit like a dolphin's nose. I can't see... Ah, oh, I was going to say, I can't see where the blowhole is. Do dolphins... I think dolphins have a blowhole, don't they? Well, so does this dolphin, but it's not sort of in the middle. It's actually located behind this grill, and I'll show you the blowing function later in the video. So anyway, I think it's a very stylish vacuum cleaner, despite the colour. Some of you may like the colour. It's not my particular cup of chamomile, I have to say. And it was quite a surprise when I unboxed this because I didn't see a picture of the machine. I expected it to be white or grey or maybe even a purple. I was not expecting salmon pink. This has a 1000 watt motor, fixed suction, straight suction, no variable speed, no boost, just a basic on off and you've got your instant suction, 1000 watt. On the back we've got two pedals. This one is for your cord rewind so you can pull out the cord and the cord is a nice colour coordinated grey colour. I've had to fit my own plug. It is a little bit distorted at the end because this was tied in a knot when I got it to prevent the cord from being wound into the machine and I was umming and ahhing whether to shorten the flex to get rid of that kink but I think I'll leave it in. It might eventually sort itself out but it has been tied in a knot for many years. So you pull out the flex, it's quite a nice smooth action, very smooth in fact. Not sure if it's going to work first thing, they often get tangled up when I try this demo initially, but let's give it a go anyway. That is excellent, first time that's happened, it's gone, gone straight in, no trouble. So auto cord rewind and your foot operated on off switch under the exhaust filter grill here we have the blowhole I was talking to you about earlier and into the blowhole we can put the hose so now this machine becomes a powerful blower designed to blow dust out of inaccessible places for you to then suck it up using the hose attached to the suction end Filters aren't washable on this generation of vacuum cleaners. Now most vacuum cleaner filters are washable. This one is replaceable. It's just quite a thick fabric pad that also acts as a diffuser and I suppose it will help muffle the noise level somewhat. So that fits back on there. A little bit further along up the body and get it into focus, get it into shot. We have a piston bag check indicator and the bag is located underneath the front cover. We just lift off the front cover like that. Well, it doesn't lift off, it just pivots. 
And inside we have the cleaning tools. You can't access the cleaning tools when the machine's running, unfortunately, because obviously when it's on, the suction is pulling down the lid. So you do have to turn the cleaner off to access the tool tray. But you can use the machine without the tools in place. So you can have the tool tray out if you want to, but for convenience, I keep them stored inside. Underneath the tool tray, of course, we've got a reusable disposable bag with a grey clip that you slide off to empty the dirt out of the bottom then you refold the bag and use it again I believe they say don't use it more than twice three times maximum but the more you use a regular paper bag the more it will become clogged and the more suction will be lost underneath or behind the paper bag should I say is another filter or should I say two filters for some reason the top filter here has a little pocket in it and that incorporates an Electrolux air freshener. It did actually come with the air freshener but I'm not going to use it. And behind this filter there's another filter more or less the same but it's just a plain filter without the pocket. And they just sort of fit on. Again, not washable. You need to replace these every so often. Not sure if you can still buy replacements. I'd have to check online. Hopefully you can, because I'm about to use this vacuum cleaner, so um, I'm sure I'll be able to vacuum it clean if it gets dirty, and I probably will risk hand washing it. So that's that, we can pop the bag in. Let me just check something. Ah, no safety feature. Most vacuum cleaners, bagged vacuum cleaners, have a device that stops you from actually closing the bag door without a bag in place, but there's no such fail safe on this Electrolux. Just pop the bag, it goes in that way, does it? No, or I'm sure, yes, I think it had the writing uppermost. That's it, you locate it at the bottom, then push it until this little black clip holds it in place. Well, I've got the tool tray out, so let's have a look at the cleaning tools. Crevice tool, quite short really, about 20, 15, 20 centimetres, so a little bit short, but it has to be to fit inside the cleaner. Your upholstery brush with litter pickers, stairs, upholstery, curtains, and your dusting brush. Mm, not very soft bristles on this, but the joint here is flexible. You can move it into different positions to suit whatever you're cleaning. Just pop that back in and just turn it so it fits. There we go. And then the tools fit hopefully, neatly back inside. On the back of the cleaner we've got a swivel caster at the front, not very smooth running, but anyway, <laughs> a little bit stiff there. And of course you've got your two wheels at the bottom. You've also got a parking bracket. In order to use that you get a little clip that we need to attach to the lower extension wand, which I have done. And it goes up a certain way as well. If you look at it the way it goes, if you put it up the other way around, it won't actually fit on to the little bracket. So this is designed to help carry the machine or when you're storing the cleaner, it just holds, it holds the wand and obviously if you have the hose attached, holds it all together, enables you to store the machine neater. Here's the hose and it's approximately 1.8 meters long, which is a little bit more generous than the stingy 1.5 meter length hoses we get on many cleaners nowadays. It swivels, a little bit squeakily, but it does. It swivels at this end. I have to put some oil or something on that. I'm not sure if you can oil plastic, some grease. Anyway, it swivels that end and it also swivels at the handle end so it shouldn't get tangled up. Here is the handle, very long handle, but the extension tube's quite short so it does need a bit of extra length, I think in order for you not to be stooping down. There's a little clip on here, but as far as I can see, there's nothing about this clip in the instruction book, but I expect that would fit the old Electrolux butterfly tool, would probably clip into there. And of course we've got the standard suction control, slider control that introduces air into the hose to reduce the suction, as this cleaner doesn't have any variable speed, this is the only way you can reduce the suction. And the hose just simply pushes in and clicks and to release you've got a little button on the side which you just push and then the hose comes away. 
Here are the two plastic extension tubes you get supplied with this Electrolux Dolphin and on the lower tube this is where I've slid the bracket that enables us to use the parking system. They're lightweight but quite tough and they have a very very good seal around each entrance, the wider part. Obviously you put them both together. The narrower end of the tube goes into the wider end and it slides in very nicely. Just push it and twist it and it does feel that it's got a very good seal. And finally, the last thing to show you before I start the demonstration is the main carpet and floor nozzle. And as you can see, it's branded Electrolux. Foot operated pedal, suitable for carpets and hard floors. If we turn the nozzle over, we can see that it's a metal based nozzle. I like to see that. Two litter pickers either side of a very wide opening. So I think when I do my tests, I can possibly get away with putting some larger clumps of dirt down because it should suck it into that huge hole there. There is a bar across the middle for some reason, maybe to strengthen it, I'm not sure what that's there for. But anyway, that might um, get caught with bits of hair and stuff, so you might have to pick those off. Got the suction channels, goes right up to the edge. And of course, when we press down on the foot pedal, the brush is lowered at the front and more or less all, all the way around the circumference of the nozzle, leaving a gap, of course, to enable the side suction channels to work. To use the Electrolux Dolphin for blowing, we first need to remove the exhaust filter and then insert the hose into the top of the cleaner. For an extra intense blow, you can put the crevice tool on the end. So now we're going to get a very strong force of air coming out of this, blowing out instead of sucking in. So I don't think there's going to be much dust behind this radiator, hopefully. But if there is, this nozzle with the blowing action will ensure that all the dust is blown out so I can suck it up with the cleaner. So let's see. I don't think we're going to see clouds of dust. I don't keep a dirty home, but anyway, let's have a go. Pardon that noise, might have been a bit noisy for you. Actually, hold my head in shame, there was a bit of dust, not loads. Bit of, bit of fluff more than dust really. So do not go telling everyone I keep a filthy house. Well I do actually, sometimes, but in, I have to make it filthy in order to demonstrate the vacuums, don't I? I've got a rug in my kitchen that's absolutely caked in muck in order to demonstrate a carpet washer. You've probably seen that video. Oh, some, some bits did come out because they've gone all over the lovely glossy finish of the dolphin. Anyway, that's blowing. Let's get on with some other testing. Right, I won't bore you with what I put down on the carpet. Suffice to say, there's more muck on this carpet than you'd find in the average home. But I need to put down lots of dirt in order to test the vacuum. So if it picks all this up, then you can be sure it should pick up the sort of dirt you'll find in your house. Anyway, I've got the carpet and floor nozzle attached on the carpet setting. It's going to switch on, pass the nozzle forward and back through the middle and see how well this old Electrolux Dolphin cleans the carpet. Let's have a look at the other. Ooh. <laughs> a lot of the dirt's fallen out. Oh, keeps coming. I should have. I should have waited a couple of seconds before turning the cleaner off. Oh dear. I told you that bit in the middle. Come on, show your bottom. I know you don't want to. Come on, show the viewers. Uh, that bit in the middle has sort of stopped some of the dirt going in. But anyway, it was. It's just a bit of fun. This. You can't buy this machine brand new now. But I just wanted to see how an 80s or early 90s vacuum coats with a lot of dirt. Well, not that well. But anyway, let's give it another go. Let's pass the nozzle a few times over this area.
Well, I have to say that that little session gave my right arm a really good workout. That was pretty hard work. There was a lot of dirt. Now it's picked up all the surface litter, all the rice, all the dust, all the bits of paper. But as you can see, there are some dark bits on the carpet, which are dog hairs, that this cleaner has picked up some of them. But it's tend to have spread them out to a larger area. As I've gone back and forth, they've tended to be moved about and deposited in another area rather than being sucked up. But still, it's not a bad performance for an old machine. And dare I say it, probably a better performance than you'd get from some Hoover cleaners from this period. Okay then, not too bad as long as you haven't got pets. I'm just going to take the dolphin into the kitchen now and clean up the remains of another demo I did earlier today. Here we have the remains of a demo I did earlier using an upright vacuum cleaner. You can just about see where I passed the machine. But beyond the cleaned path, there's a load of dust and debris that had been scattered behind the cleaner. The upright I tested was a machine where you couldn't turn the brush roll off and consequently it scattered a lot of the dirt behind it. So in order to clean the rest of this up, I'm going to use the Dolphin. A straight suction cleaner, in my opinion, is always best for cleaning your hard floors. Failing that, a broom, but not an upright vacuum. Certainly not one with a brush you can't stop. Okay, let's switch on this hideous salmon pink dolphin and hopefully clean all this mess up. pretty good, you get the general idea. What I did notice actually, you might not have noticed on camera, was this nozzle was very good at picking up from the front. I don't know why. Whoops. It's dropping a bit. I suppose, yes, it's got some rather large grooves in the brush that enabled it, there we go, to clean to the edge of the units front ways on, a little bit of hair stuck on there, a bit of static has caused that. But I've noticed just here where I've got a built-in heater, there's quite a lot of debris has been scattered behind that. So I'm going to try and get that with the suction of the machine using the crevice nozzle. Now the Electrolux didn't do this obviously, it was the upright that did this in my previous demo. So I'll attach the crevice tool to the end of the hose and see if I can grab all that debris there. Now I thought this would be the case, the suction isn't strong enough and not many vacuum cleaners would have been able to do this. A lot of the debris is at least two centimetres, two to three centimetres away from the end of the nozzle. But this is where the blowing function may come in use. So I'm not sure though, if I blow it, it's going to just blow it underneath. I'll try and blow it out, but um, I have a feeling I'm just going to blow it further underneath the units, but never mind, it'll still out of sight, out of, out of mind, as they say. Now, before I turn this machine on for the second time, I did direct the hose into the suction inlet, just in case there was any dirt that was in the hose that would have been blown out of the machine. So it's going to be just clean air now that's coming out of here. So I'm going to try and angle this 
so it blows all this dirt from my heater. Let's have a go. Not bad, some of it did come out into the kitchen for me to be able to reach with the suction. Some of it's gone a bit further in. So I think I need to take the grill off to give this a more thorough clean. But I can still use the blowing function because there's a lot of, I don't know if you can quite see beyond this white grill, there's a lot of veins, metal veins that form part of this heater, which will obviously get covered in dust after a long time. So if I remove that, I can actually use the suction and give those veins are really good clean. As you can see the Electrolux Dolphin does fit quite securely on a standard step so it's fairly easy to do your stair cleaning but I'm just going to see how far we can actually reach up with the machine at the bottom of the stairs before we need to actually balance it on a stair. Okay so I've got the Electrolux Dolphin stood on its end at the bottom of the stairs let's see how far up I can reach. Now I've just got the upholstery slash stair cleaning nozzle on the end of the handle directly. I think the handle is long enough for me not to need the extension tube. So let's see how many stairs I can reach. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So just about seven stairs can be easily cleaned with the machine at the bottom. But to do the rest of the stairs, I can either carry it. I mean, it's not light, but it's easy to carry in one hand while I direct the nozzle in the other. So I can go right up to the top. Or of course, I can put the machine on a stair a bit lower down, so I'm not carrying it. Just be careful I don't actually topple the machine over. But I can clean quite safely with a machine halfway up the stairs. So all in all, not too bad for stair cleaning. In fact, you'll find most cylinder cleaners are more convenient for cleaning stairs than the average upright. Well, that's nearly the end of my demonstration video for the Electrolux Dolphin. Shall we see if the automatic flex rewind works as well as it did at the beginning of the video? There we go. No problem. So there we have it. I think you'll agree, for a machine of this age, it's done a very good job. It failed on the pet hair, but even modern cylinder cleaners don't do very well on pet hair, unless of course they have a turbo or a power nozzle. One last look, shall we just see all the dirt that we've removed in these demonstrations. Let me just take out the bag. Ooh, pretty full. And out of interest, let me just have a look inside the bag compartment. Well, let's take the hose off and I can show you a bit better. Despite the fact it's just a paper bag, I expect it's more than a single layered paper bag, it's at least a twin layered bag. It seems all that dirt it seems to have retained it because that is still pretty clean, isn't it? What's the filter like? Even the filter. Wow, that is pretty impressive. If only I'd been into Electrolux cleaners back in the day, but anyway, I've managed to catch up with my knowledge of Electrolux cleaners over the past few months. And I've always liked the Dolphin, even when I liked Hoover. I always liked the look of the Electrolux Dolphin. So, in the old days, before that nasty Mr. Dyson came along, this is what you used to do. Sometimes you had to dispose of the bag. They weren't all reusable dust bags, but many cleaners did have this slide and you could reuse the bag a couple of times. So there we go. Just slightly out of camera shot, I'll rectify that for you now. So there it is. Quite a lot of dirt that we've picked up. Yes, I think I've got everything out of the bag. Obviously there's still a fine layer of dust in the bag. It is a twin layered bag. You can actually see, I might be able to separate the layer and show you because it's actually trapped the very fine dust in between the layers. Not sure if I can actually open this one out. Ah yes. So it's a twin layered bag, got the paper, one layer of the paper on the outside 
and then you've got a finer paper, you can just see my fingers through it. So it's done a pretty good job actually of keeping the dirt in the bag. I'm quite surprised that the bag compartment, considering all this I picked up in a short space of time, it did stay in the bag. Well that's the end of the video. If you've liked it, please subscribe and you'll be updated every time I upload a new floor care video. I don't just do older machines like this, I do vintage machines from the 70s and 80s and I also do brand new machines that you can buy in the shops now. So stay tuned, lots more vacuum cleaners, carpet washers and other floor care videos to come. So until the next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.